Hi, I'm Gordon Wade at Wade Research. This is a 20 inch F3.3 mirror blank that I'm about to start fabricating. Uh, this is a, kind of an interesting blank. Uh, I had it specially made. It's a molded blank that came from United Lens. Uh, the reason we have them molded, uh, the front is so deep, F3.3, that it's actually cheaper to build a mold and then uh, pour molten borosilicate glass in there than to fabricate them the usual way, which is to just cut a circle out of a sheet of borosilicate. Uh, the glass that they save from the curve uh, can be reclaimed and, uh, you know, you pour a certain number of these, you get a free blank, essentially. So uh, it's really nice to make them that way because they're cheaper, but there's a little extra labor involved then. Uh, the front of this blank is on the downside facing the, the turntable in the smear grinding machine, and uh, it's a little rougher than you'd expect uh, of a normally generated blank. On a normal generated blank you can start grinding with uh, 320 or 25 microns, something like that. But on this one I'll have to do some rough grinding on it. The nice side though to compensate is the back of this. Uh, after it's molded and popped out of the mold, they run this uh, on a blanchard grinder and grind the back flat. And it's really flat. It's accurate to about a thousandth of an inch or so. The downside of the blanchard grinder is that you get a very sharp edge on the mirror. Uh, it's actually, when it just comes off, it's sharp enough to cut you. So the first operation on a mirror blank, uh, before I start actually the, the real grinding of the curve, is to put a bevel on both the front and the back uh, corners here. Now on the back, it's bas basically a safety issue because this is so sharp you could get cut. On the front side, though, you want to put a nice bevel on there because during rough grinding, you tend to knock little chips out of that sharp edge there. So by putting a bevel on there, you're safer and have a better cosmetic mirror. To do this beveling work, I use a high-speed uh, rotary tool, uh, kind of your standard dr Dremel tool in this case. And the uh, tool that I use is a diamond disc on the front. The disc here is actually impregnated with diamonds on both surfaces. Obviously, I can only use the front side. And basically, I run the turntable at a low speed and put this up against that corner at a 45 degree angle to grind the bevel down on it. So um, the only real trick to it is uh, the angle left and right of the tool is important. The mirror is going by this way. Here, I'll turn it on and let you see. Uh, we'll lower the speed on this down to 4 or 5 RPMs, which is plenty fast enough for this. You don't want to be going fast. Um, so basically, the glass is going by in this direction. So you don't want this uh, tool to lean to the right because that would put the leading edge of the uh, grinding tool grinding into the movement of this mirror and that would cause it to grab and skip and jump and wouldn't be healthy. So instead of leaning to the right, you want it to lean just a little to the left so that as the mirror goes by, it's dragging under the left side of the grinding tool. And that will be nice and smooth and a good way to do this operation. Uh, anytime you do grinding with a diamond tool, you want the wet, uh, wetting down the surface and the tool itself uh, both increases the life of the tool because the lubrication on the diamonds is a good thing, and it also reduces the amount of dust that gets up in the air. You don't want to breathe the glass dust that comes from grinding borosilicate. It's real hard on your lungs and can give you a disease that you can die from if you have a lung exposure. Uh, and any time you grind, you should use a respiratory ma mask. So uh, I'm going to grind here for just a minute on this thing so that you get an idea. Uh, it's obnoxiously loud, but it won't take you long to get the idea of how this works. So I only went halfway around or so. Uh, for a normal bevel, you'd do maybe anywhere from 3 to 20 laps on it. Um, depending on how much bevel might already be there and how much bevel you want to put on it. On the back, you really just do enough so that it's not sharp anymore. On the front, you want a more substantial bevel to avoid those chips that we were talking about. So this is the first step in uh, prior to starting the real fabrication on this 20-inch F3.3 mirror bone. This particular mirror blank was molded for us at United Lens. Uh, it's a nice blank, a little more inexpensive when you have them molded like that, but it does leave kind of a chopped up surface. The molds aren't precision molds by any means. 
So the first thing that I need to do on this new blank is to find out what kind of radius is on there to begin with. To do that, I have a digital spherometer. This spherometer has a computer controller inside it so that I don't have to do any mathematics. It does all the work for me. Uh, it uses a variety of probes. This is a 5-inch probe uh, in particular. I like the 5-inch for mirror this size at the beginning because I can use it to take regional measurements on the mirror to get an accurate idea of what's going on all over it. The machine reads directly the radius on the readout, uh, so it's very simple to use. You set the ring diameter to the 5 inches to match this, and then basically uh, you choose inches or millimeters and away you go. So in this mirror, uh, I start with a surface plate here. This is a granite surface plate, accurate to something between a thousandth of an inch and a ten thousandth of, of an inch. And I use that as my reference plane, or a flat. So I just put the probe on there and zero the spherometer till that's flat and then transfer it over to the mirror itself. And this tells me the direct reading on the inside that the radius at that particular spot is 116.7 inches. I write down each measurement right on the zone in which I took it. This gives me a good idea of the structure of the surface. Uh, the target on this mirror is to have a radius of 132 inches. So this shows me how far I am off of that in every zone on the mirror surface. The next step in working this mirror is to create a steel grinding tool. I start with some adhesive backed shelf liner paper and I cut a piece that's roughly the same size as the mirror. I want it to be bigger than the 15 inch diameter of this mirror. I have a circle made from a piece of MDF that I cut out that is 15 inches on the outside, the same as the diameter of this tool. And drawing a ring around it shows me the limits of the tool itself. This tool is going to be made out of steel nuts, which last just about forever. I put the steel nuts on the sticky side of the paper and uh, populate the circle that I've made. I uh, don't make the uh, pattern of steel nuts symmetrical or anything like that. I basically just stick them in wherever I can and try to distribute them fairly evenly but a little bit randomly on the surface of the adhesive paper. And the whole thing obviously needs to go and be centered in the mirror itself. Uh, once this is done, you have to build some sort of a dam or mold for the actual uh, uh, plaster to go in. I start again with my 15 inch circle and a piece of plastic. This is the sort of plastic that you can get at a sign shop. It's quite thin and the important point about this is to make sure that you have a very flat side on the downside because you want that uh, edge to seal up tight against the face of the mirror uh, via the sticky paper. So I wrap it around the form, uh, the piece of MDF, and then pull it up tight so that it'll be a good mold. Then I move the piece of MDF up inside the form just a little bit so that it'll be only plastic in contact with the plaster. The plaster won't stick to the, to the plas plastic. The next step is to mix up the dental plaster. Basically it's just uh, the dental plaster powder mixed with water. I put a little water in the bottom of the bucket to start and then start adding the dental plaster. I know that I want about an inch and a quarter of dental plaster in my mold and given the size of my bucket versus the size of the mirror, I know that I'm going to need about three, three and a half inches of finished plaster. So I just keep adding plaster to the water and mixing it up. Now the plaster comes with detailed instructions for how to make perfect dental plaster, but I really don't bother with those. I just mix it by eye. Uh, basically I like it to be the consistency uh, thicker than milk, something like heavy cream maybe. Uh, it, you want it to be thick enough, but, but then again thin enough so that it will go down inside the nuts and do a good job. When the time comes to pour the plaster, I just pour it in pretty slowly so that you don't disturb the nuts and then uh, fill it up to the top of the, of the tops of the nuts plus the size of my little center push, which is actually just a half inch pipe coupler. Once the plaster set up, it takes only about 45 minutes. Uh, you can take the assembly apart, skid it off the mirror, and then uh, basically just unwrap the plastic, 
take off the MDF form and you're down to the tool itself. You'll notice that the dental plaster will probably be warm. That's a normal thing in the uh, drying process and curing process of the dental plaster. It'll even still be warm after 45 minutes and if you check it earlier than that it'll actually be a little hot. Once I've got the plaster out of the mold I use a tool called a sure form and the sure form is what I use to take the corners off the uh, tool. The back of the tool can get a little sharp and that's uh, something that you want to get rid of. Also I use it to flatten the back and take off any bubbles that might have formed then. When you peel off the sticky paper you can inspect the surface that you've made. If it's not perfect uh, you might see some gaps so just mix up a little tiny bit of dental plaster and pour it into those little cracks or crevices and then let it dry for just a minute or so and then you'll be able to rub off the excess with your hand and make the top flush with the top of the tool. After the tool is all finished, the next job is to use a rotary cutter to make shallow channels between all of the steel nuts on the tool. These little channels are really important in the action of the tool during grinding. It gives the loose abrasives that you're using the opportunity to get in between the tool and the surface of the mirror and then to be distributed around and also for the swarf that comes off to have a place to go. Basically, I just route these about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch deep. Now my steel grinding tool is all ready to go, so it's time to set up my fixed post grinding machine to do some rough grinding. For every mirror size that I make, I have a wooden retainer ring that I use to keep the, the mirror in place on top of my turntable. Uh, I used a CNC machine to make the turntable and the retaining ring. So there's a set of four mounting holes that are perfectly aligned. When I bolt down this ring on the surface of my grinding machine, it means that when I put the mirror down inside there, it'll be perfectly concentric on the turntable. I add in a piece of artificial turf that has about a half an inch of uh, turf on it which is a good thickness to cushion the mirror and then the mirror just drops in there's nothing else holding it in place but when you operate the machine and run it up to high speed the retaining ring gives very even uh, support of the mirror blank the nice part about it is that the mirror blank is loose inside there though so you don't get binding po points and it can move around a little bit so it helps you to avoid astigmatism when you're grinding on the mirror Now I'm actually ready to begin the rough grinding. Uh, these molded blanks are quite rugged on the surface, so I actually start with number 24 silicon carbide abrasive. Now 24 is really, really coarse. Uh, I put it into a like a salt shaker and sprinkle it onto the mirror with the salt shaker. Uh, I start with the 24 and distribute it on the surface of the machine, and I don't use a lot at any one time. Uh, after I spread that out, I put the mirror face down, or excuse me, the tool face down. And for the first pass, I arrange it so that it's just tangent to the edge of the mirror. I don't want it to overhang because sometimes there's a, a tendency to throw off chips early in this process. So I leave them just roughly tangent at the edge for my first uh, set of grinding. Uh, I grind for a little while with no weight. Uh, just for safety and as soon as I know that everything's going to be all right I add first a 10 pound weight and then later another 10 pound weight so that I'll do most of my rough grinding on this blank with 20 pounds of added weight so I just sprinkle on the number 24 abrasive squirt on water and run the machine I start out at about 30 rpms then I'll slowly bring it up to 45 rpms and then after I'm comfortable with everything I'll run it up to full speed which is 60 rpms on this particular fixed post grinding machine.